It has been five years since Kimberly Bell's murder, but investigators in Douglas County have now made two arrests in the case. Thanks for joining us for 4 o'clock at 9 News. I'm Tom Green. And I'm Kim Christensen. We're learning new details in the 2019 murder of Kimberly Bell. 9 News reporter Rachel Kraus joins us from uh, Douglas County Live. And Rachel, you spoke to law enforcement about the break in this case. Yeah, the Douglas County Sheriff says Kimberly Bell was first reported missing back in July of 2019. Now they know she was murdered and a grand jury has indicted two people for their role in her death. Javier, Javier Martel and Jennifer Bramer have been arrested. Martel is charged with Bell's murder. Bramer with felony accessory to a crime and identity theft. The Douglas County Sheriff tells us Bramer and Martell were in a car with Bell back on July 22nd, 2019. Investigators say Martell choked Bell to death. From there, the sheriff says the pair drove to a Home Depot and bought an ax. Then driving up to Estes Park, where Martell allegedly dismembered her body, throwing the remains in trash bags and tossing them into a dumpster. The case went cold, but investigators never gave up. A lot of witness interviews were done. This this case literally took many years to come to this, uh, to get to this point. And we sent detec detectives uh, to Texas. We've sent CSIs uh, around the country as well. This case literally took years to solve, uh, to put everything together, together to get that grand jury indictment. Now, the sheriff here says this is a very big break for the case, but this investigation here, it's far from over. They're asking anyone with any information about Martel, Bramer, or what happened to Kimberly Bell that night back in 2019 to please contact the Douglas County Sheriff's Office cold case team. Reporting live in Castle Rock, Rachel Krause, 9 News. Thank you, Rachel. I think many of us have a lot of questions like how did she know these people? What was their relationship? What led up to this? So hopefully they can piece all of that together. All right. Thank you, Rachel Krauss reporting. A deputy is recovering after being shot this morning in Elizabeth. Yeah, we know that the shooting happened while officers and deputies were serving a search warrant at an apartment complex. And the Elbert County Sheriff tells us today that the suspect has died. Nine News investigates Jeremy Hohola is live in Elizabeth with the latest. Jeremy? Yeah, that's right. Behind me here, the crime scene is still very much active with evidence tech still on scene here, processing a lot of evidence here. Neighbors who live in this neighborhood say a site like this with the armored truck and the crime scene tape still very uncommon for the town of Elizabeth. This morning, an army of SWAT officers converged on a usually sleepy street in the town of Elizabeth. And I heard like four or five gunshots that had gone off and it was really loud. Neighbors were surprised at the sight of armored vehicles, loads of police and the sounds of gunfire. Elbert County deputies and Elizabeth police tell us their target was in this apartment. They were serving a search warrant around nine this morning. So as we approached to serve the warrant on this uh, location, we did a surrounding of the building and as they approached the door, the door was opened and the shots were fired. It's not clear yet who fired first, the man or the deputies. The gunfire continued. One deputy was hit. One officer was struck in the soft plate of their ballistic vest. Uh, the officer suffered minor injuries and has been evaluated by medical personnel. Eventually, officers fired tear gas into the apartment and breached the doors. Once inside, they found the man dead. The sheriff and the town chief of police would not go into detail about the investigation behind the search warrant. The sheriff made commentary about needing more resources these days. The world's changed in the last 10 years. I've been a cop 40 years, and from the 40 years up to now, things have changed a lot. I'm sure Chief will agree with me that we have to be prepared for anything out here. It may not happen very often, which we're very thankful for, but uh, we have to be ready and prepared for it. I mean, it's surprising. Like, I guess it still just hasn't hit me as a real thing. No, it is surprising because it's such a small town and everybody is generally sweet and willing to help each other. So far, that man's identity has yet to be released. In the meantime, the chief of police here in Elizabeth did hint the search warrant that they were serving here is related to two prior incidents that happened here in Elizabeth. As for what those incidents were about, that remains unknown. Live in Elizabeth, Colorado, Jeremy Hohol in 9 News. Yeah, Jeremy, that uh, search warrant, uh, the details surrounding that certainly will provide some daylight when they do uh, are a little more forthcoming about that. Thanks for the update. 
So today felt a tad bit more like fall around Boy, the metro area. Boy, it looks it there. Look at your pictures. Look at the changing colors in the high country. This is the view Barb sent us from St. Elmo area in Chaffee County. So stunning how we're still seeing good color out there. I got to be honest, Kathy, I knew Elmo before he was a saint. So it's it's nice to see that he's, he's got that area now. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. And we need those pictures to remind us that it is actually fall because we almost had a record high temperature of 85 yesterday. The temperatures have been trending so warm. It's been so dry, but get out and check out the leaves because what's coming over the weekend may take a lot of those leaves down. In Denver today, blue skies, beautiful day up in Grand Lake. Almost looks like a summer day up in the Grand Lake area today. A little bit of haze out there, still tracking some wildfire smoke coming in from Utah and also Wyoming. And there's a little bit of moisture coming into Colorado from the southwest, but this is the weather maker that will have the biggest impact for Colorado come the weekend. Maybe some mountain snow, beneficial rain for lower elevations and that starts on Friday. Saturday's the best day to get that beneficial rain winding down on Sunday afternoon. Winds have really been picking up out of the east in the last hour. We had a weak dry front come in that brought temperatures down into the low and mid 70s today as compared to the mid 80s yesterday, but it's really warm and dry. Elevated fire danger, something we'll be talking about tomorrow ahead of a system that could bring a freeze, frost, some snow, some rain. We'll have the timing and impact of this next big weather change and what it means for your upcoming weekend plans in just a bit. We have three weeks to go until Election Day and in Georgia, early in person in person voting opened up today in the state that both presidential campaigns certainly are fighting to win. Georgia election officials are predicting record breaking numbers before Election Day. NBC's Bree Jackson has the latest from the campaign trail. Long lines as early in person voting gets underway in Georgia, a sign of voter enthusiasm in a critical battleground state. It was our constitutional duty to make a change. It's time for a change in the country. I felt a leading, a calling to come and, and vote today. An NBC News poll shows more than half of voters plan to cast their ballots early this year. A key issue driving many to the polls is the economy. Former President Trump claims Americans would be better off under his leadership. We're going to bring companies back to our country. Mr. Trump's remarks follow an unusual turn of events during his Pennsylvania town hall Monday. Medical emergencies in the crowd sparked an impromptu concert, leaving Trump swaying on stage. Would anybody else like to faint? I think he handled that very well. He stopped, he waited. The Harris campaign mocking her opponent's behavior, saying he appears confused. A statement that's in line with the vice president's strategy of painting Trump as unfit and using his own words against him. Donald Trump is increasingly unstable and unhinged. And he is out for unchecked power. That's what he's looking for. Harris looking to motivate black men during a media blitz this week. Trump focusing on women voters during a Georgia town hall tonight. Both candidates in a final push to get supporters to the polls. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. And here in Colorado, one of the propositions voters will be deciding on is whether or not to create a position that falls below veterinarians. People on both sides of Prop 129 agree on two things. They want what's best for your pet, and the veterinarian shortage is a problem. But they disagree as to whether this new position is the right way to address the shortage. If we don't do something to start increasing access to veterinary care, animals suffer. And that's why the Dumb Friends League has chosen this as a really important issue for us. These people will be able to diagnose, initiate treatment plans, and do surgery. I, I don't see how they will be able to be competent to do those things. The proposition comes on the heels of two bills signed into law this year, one that allows vets to delegate more work to veterinarian technicians, and the other allows telehealth appointments between vets and pet owners. Our team is trying to make it really easy for you to get your vote out and get it to count. Just text the word vote to 303-871-1491. We'll text you back a link to our full voter guide.